All right, so I think we're gonna call these videos Mike's AliExpress journey, and this is sort of like part uh, or part part one. And these two coolers here are something that a lot of you guys have been talking about in every single one of the budget heatsink videos that I've done. I mean, there's this comment, and this comment, and this comment, and that comment, and that comment, and that comment, and there's a bunch of others. So these are the snowman coolers from AliExpress. And this one is called the MT4. It comes in single or dual fan configurations. And the MT4 is because it has four heat pipes. And this is the MT6. It looks like a blackout version of the MT4, but it's actually not. It's a completely different cooler. Now the prices for these are really what stands out. This one right here is about 19 bucks US and this one here is about 28 bucks US. Now there's a little bit of a asterisk on that because they are shipping from China. I'm going to get into that a little bit later. But the nice things about these is that unlike all of the other components that have been out there, these things are not new but their prices have not gone up in the last couple of years. I think these were launched like me like three or four years ago. But I think one of the things that I wanted to focus on this video is the fact that just because a cooler is inexpensive, it doesn't mean that it's necessarily cheap. So let's get into that right after a message from our sponsor. Introducing a new way to temper glass with a divider 300 series from Thermotake. I love me a good triangle. There's certain mystery behind it with a flexible interior layout so you can showcase your system in a particular way. The divider 300 TG, triangle the right way. Okay, before we get too far into the specifics of these two coolers, there is something I really need to be honest with you guys about and that's the actual cost. And I'm not talking about the cost that's written on the AliExpress site. It's the cost of these coolers when they actually get to you. And that is especially true for here in Canada. It's probably true for some other regions in the world, especially if you're like me and you didn't get free shipping on them. So first of all, this $18 or $19 cooler ended up becoming about $35 US. And once you basically translate that into Canadian, you're looking at something like 50 bucks after the credit card company takes their pound of flesh. It's basically the same thing with this thing. That $28 cooler becomes $35 and you add the credit card company crap on top of that and it's suddenly a lot more expensive. And now the other thing that I wanted to mention is that neither of these natively comes with mounting hardware. What you have to do is when you're ordering the cooler is specify the mounting hardware that you want and that's a huge mess with the MT6 like I'm gonna show you in a little bit but at the same time another thing is that neither of them comes with thermal compound this guy over here was supposed to come with thermal compound it was never included in the box so that is another expense and lastly the way that these things ship and I, look I never get into this but it looks like somebody took these boxes and used them in an MMA fight so that is something that you want to take into account because they ship in basically plastic mailing envelopes. And that's the last thing you want any component shipping. And luckily these things are metal and they didn't get damaged. So what do you get for these inexpensive prices? Well, these might look like the exact same cooler with the MT4 having four heat pipes and the MT6 having six heat pipes, but they're actually completely different designs. And one of the main differences is the fact that the MT6, even though it's a higher end cooler, actually has a smaller height. Other than that, their thickness is completely the same. The only difference here with the ones that I have here in front of me is the fact that I have the dual fan version of the MT4. But let's get into the MT4 because I mean, look, it is a basic heatsink. It has four direct touch heat pipes going up into a standard silver fin array. And then on my version, I did get the dual fan version. There's also a single fan version. One of my issues with this is the fact that both of the fans are linked together with a single cord. There's no Y splitter or anything else or adapter. I would very much prefer a Y splitter to this. Now the MT6 on the other hand, well that's, it. like I said, it looks like a blackout version of the MT4, but it's actually not. It has those six direct touch heat pipes and believe it or not, the version that we had actually came with the AMD AM4 installation package pre-installed, which is which seems a little bit weird. But other than that, what I did is I went out and I purchased the ARGB version of this, but there's also a RGB and also just a regular non-illuminated fan version. So if you want to save a couple of cents here and there, and trust me, it's a couple of cents, you can go with one of the little bit lower end versions. And it's the same thing with the MT4. The MT4, you can get it with RGB, with out RGB and with ARGB. It's just all about that price. But anyways, what I really wanted to get into is the installation of these things. And it really surprised me because at one point it's really good. And on another cooler, it's the most trash thing you've ever seen in your life. 
So let's get into that. All right, so we're gonna start with the MT6 installation. In our case right here, it already has the AMD brackets installed and it uses the stock AMD mounting system. The only thing, it is just a bit of a pain in the butt to get in because after you clip in one side, it's basically a rocking mechanism in order for you to get it to clip on the other. The problem is, is that if you have thermal compound already installed here, what's gonna happen is it's probably gonna try to sort of squirt out the side and you're gonna get a completely uneven mount with that thermal compound. Then the next thing you have to do is just bear down as hard as you can on one side until you hear the clip. And then it's completely installed. Now, is it well mounted? Yes, it doesn't move anywhere. The only thing is that for a almost 700 gram cooler, this is not exactly an optimal installation process. And let's talk about Intel too, because Intel, my God, it's a disaster. So what you get is you get a adapter ring for Intel instead of a typical backplate. And what this does is, is it adapts the Intel installation to an almost AMD clip mount. The problem with it though, is it comes with these cheap ass plastic push pins for a 700 gram cooler. And I've already broken like three of them, so we can't install this again. But let's be honest, if you have an Intel system, this, this, this is You have to throw it out and go with another cooler. So let's get on to the MT4 installation, which is a lot better than what you see here. Okay, so moving on to the MT4. And the MT4 is pretty ironic because its installation process and the installation hardware is so much more robust than the MT6S, especially when it comes to Intel, but I'm gonna sort of get to that in a bit. So what you get is you get these metal arms that have screws, and in this case, it's the AM4, AM3, and AM2 brackets. And these are installed with these small little screws. Now that isn't too big of a deal because we've seen it in the past. And then all you have to do is take that, put it on the stock AMD backplate, and whoop, uh, uh, don't fall. <laughs> and screw down on opposite sides until everything is secure. Now, I also wanted to talk about the Intel process. Now, that is really basic, and we've seen this on a lot of other coolers already. And no, it doesn't come with this sort of piece of crap ring at all. So we're just gonna throw that over there. It actually comes with a back plate that has these sort of adaptable sliders that'll move to adapt to the different Intel sockets. And then there's one of these sort of brackets that you put on top again, and then you screw it all together. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna install the two fans on this cooler, and we're gonna talk a little bit about memory compatibility. Well, the, the cooler is installed, I've got the fans on, and the first thing I wanna mention is the fan clips. They're really basic, but they work well. There's no reason to redesign something that actually works. And yes, a bunch of companies do that. But RAM compatibility. So here, yes, the RAM is actually touching this fan and it's on the slot that's closest to the fan. But look, this cooler is designed directly for compatibility with memory. So there's absolutely nothing to worry about unless you're using really, really chunky modules and all of your slots are populated. So I do have to give Snowman credit for that. The other thing I wanted to mention is the MT6S has the exact same depth with the fan installed. And I mean, yes, this is a double fan cooler here that you can see, but the single fan MT6S has the exact same memory compatibility. So I guess that's it. We can move on to the performance results. So let's start off with the approximate fan speeds we needed to set to hit the noise range you'll see in these performance results in a bit. The interesting thing here is that the MT6 is supposed to have a fan that hits 1500 RPMs while the MT4s are rated to 1800 RPMs. But that actually wasn't anything close to reality since the results were actually flipped. On one hand, the MT6's fan went all the way to 2100 RPMs, while the MT4's only got to about 1400, so I guess there's something really going on with quality control here. So starting off with a lower wattage of 95 watts, the MT4 with a single fan starts off super strong, but then ends up a little worse than the Hyper 212 Black Edition. Basically, if you're looking for a lower noise solution, this thing can match the 212, but it still gets beat by the Purox Slim 2 I reviewed a little while ago. Adding another fan to it does end up improving temperatures by a bit, but it also increases the maximum noise, so you really have to take that into account, guys. The MT6, on the other hand, well, what can I say other than wow? Even with its dodgy mounting system, at this lower wattage, it actually beat the U12S 
I had a lower noise too. Seriously, I wasn't expecting this at all. You can actually see this a little bit clearer with the results normalized to 38 decibels. While the MT4 is a solid, solid middle of the pack performer, even with two fans installed, that MT6 just runs away with things. But what about higher wattage? Well, at 125 watts, the MT4 with one fan is able to consistently beat the 212 while also matching the Pure Rock Slim 2. But we also have to remember that Pure Rock Slim 2 is a 92 millimeter cooler. Add another fan and it gets a good one to two degrees better cooling, but at the same time, it does get a lot louder and the additional noise really doesn't bring any better performance. And that points towards the design itself being a limitation here rather than the amount of airflow being pushed through it. And finally, that MT6 again, at lower decibel levels, it beats the U12S, but after that, it actually starts falling behind. And you've got to remember, this thing gets really, really loud with its fan cranked. So if you end up getting one, make sure you manually control it instead of your motherboard taking over and making it louder than it actually should be. Anyways, it's pretty evident that as heat loads increase, the MT6 is starting to look really, really impressive. But at this point, I also have to mention that the MT4 is the only dual fan config here. Its results are good, but for a dual fan cooler, not so much. At the same time though, you can't forget its crazy low price, provided you can get it for that. Now at 150 watts, well, I'll make this easy. Single fan, MT4, fail but so do a lot of the other coolers in these charts, and those are more expensive. Add another fan to that, and it actually starts passing at higher noise levels and pretty much matches the 212 Black. But man, that MT6, well, it actually failed at lower RPMs, but so did the U12S. Then increased the fan speed a bit, and boom, within a degree of the Noctua. That, that's, I was not expecting this at all. Sure, it does get louder at the top end, but you don't even need those higher RPMs to get decent results anyways. So yeah, right now the MT6 is the only cooler other than the U12S that passes every single test with our lower wattage AMD Ryzen test system at 38 decibels. Now I'm really wondering how it would do if I popped it into the system we use for higher end air coolers. So I guess that really brings me to the last thoughts about these two coolers. And I have to say, I was shocked by how good they did, but at the same time, I mean, it's, it's a cooler. These designs have been around forever. It only does really poorly when something is completely messed up, like Corsair did with their A500 cooler. Both of these are an absolute screaming value if you can actually manage to get them for the prices that they're listed for and your country doesn't have a million dollars worth of shipping charges. But at the same time, would I buy them? The answer to that is absolutely. If you can take into account the fact that they don't have thermal compound and the fact that you're going to be waiting quite a while for them. I think I waited almost two months for these. The other thing that I wanted to mention is the MT6. If you have an Intel system, I would not touch this thing with a 10 foot pole until you're guaranteed that they've changed the installation method. And that's pretty much it. I really want to inspire you guys to keep on writing the comments because I want to do a couple more of these AliExpress journeys if there's anything else you guys want to see. But uh, I mean, other than that, I'm Mike with Hardware Canucks and uh, well, these coolers impress me. I guess I'll see you in the, in the next one. Leaf rips you off with custom charges. It is the exchange charges. Big breath. Big breath. Okay, get so much better for being inside and recording this video. Okay, that's an outtake actually. <laughs>